Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. I am so excited to join you today, and thank you for stopping by my channel. Today, I have something really super fun. We are gonna decorate my mom's coffee bar for 4th of July. So if you've been following me, you know that I uploaded a ton of ideas for tiered trays, but also regular 4th of July home decor as well. So we're gonna be incorporating some of that into this display. So if you didn't know, I actually have been living with my parents, my husband, my daughter, and I have been living here since October because we sold our house and we're waiting for our new house to be ready. So my mom allowed me to have the coffee bar as my space to decorate, so I've definitely taken advantage of that for every season. And I can't wait to share with you what I have in store for the 4th of July. But first, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Then follow me on Instagram and Facebook so you can join my crafting community. Over there, I'm able to post kind of more personal stuff and behind the scenes content that I know you're not gonna wanna miss. All right, well first, I do wanna apologize with the way that I look and the way that I sound. I've been battling a cold ever since we got back from vacation. It is honestly taking all my energy to even just do this right now, but I really wanted to get it out for you guys so you guys can get some really cute decor ideas for the 4th of July. So if I sound stuffy or if I have to take a breath or two, I apologize, I'm just having some cold issues. But. Oh well, the show must go on. So let's get into decorating my 4th of July coffee bar. Okay, so real quick before we get started, I just wanted to go over some things that I always have handy while I decorate my coffee bar. So the first thing is, is a pair of wire cutters. And the reason why I have these is because I am gonna be working with florals, so this will help me to cut the wire. Then I also have tape handy, some different themed ribbons, and then I also have either tissue paper or napkins or tissue or newspaper, something that you can use to stuff inside something to raise it up, and I'll explain that in a little bit. And then also also, I always keep risers. Now, I use these wood risers that I got from the Dollar Tree. One day, I'll paint them white to match my tiered tray, but then I also have these little things from Ray Dunn that they are toppers for mugs, but I like to use these as risers as well. But then you're also gonna see two risers that I made in my tiered tray video, and that's coming right up. All right, so now that we went over all of those little tips, I'm gonna show you everything we have to work with today for my 4th of July coffee bar. Okay, so here is just an overview of all of the stuff that I have laid out that I believe is gonna go into the coffee bar. I have two tiered trays that I'm gonna be decorating, so I have enough stuff to fill those. Then of course I have my candies over there and my absolute favorite, peanut M&Ms. And then I have my florals, and then I have a ton of the DIYs that I made, so I'm gonna show you how I incorporate that. I also have a bunch of Ray Dunn pieces, like that mug or this camper, and I have a lot of the mugs, actually. And then I have this really cute set that says red, white, and blue, and I think it is adorable, plus those two pieces back there. So I'm just gonna be using all of these items to decorate this coffee bar, so let's go. So to use as a runner for my coffee bar, I picked up this burlap runner from Amazon. I will have the link in the description box below. It was the perfect length, and I believe it was only like seven or eight bucks. Now I was gonna add stars or something to this, but honestly, I think with all of that red, white, and blue decor, it's gonna be perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna lay this out first. Like I said, it was the perfect length. All right, now we're gonna move on to my first tier tray. This is the first tier tray I'm gonna be using. This is actually supposed to be a three tier tray. There is supposed to be a tray up top here, but because it won't fit under there, I actually took it off and then I stole a nut from my dad's tools. I put it on there and then I painted it white. So that's why it looks kind of weird up here. That's why, because there's supposed to be another tray. But I've been using this the whole time and I absolutely love it. Funny story, I actually have this exact same one as a two tier tray in storage. If only I would have known that I would have needed it, I wouldn't have packed it away. But I guess now I have a three tier tray and a two tier tray that look exactly like this. I got this at Hobby Lobby, it was 40% off. I am. I apologize, I, I don't know how much it was, but I am excited to decorate this, so let's get started. 
So, of course, the first thing I did was wipe down my tiered tray. I had just taken off all of the bead decor that I had for summer. So, I was getting some glitter and some paint off of there. And the first thing I did was took this little milk jug that I got from Michaels. And I got it for 50% off. So, I thought it was perfect. And then I'm going to put a Ray Dunn mug right in front of that. Next, I'm going to take one of my little risers and put it on the opposite side. And then to go on top of my riser is my cute little gnome. Don't forget, all of the links to these videos of my tiered tray decor and my 4th of July decor will be in the description box below. Then I went ahead and I put my beaded garland around that little post in the front. And then to hide that post, I'm going to put my United We Stand star sign right in front. Moving down to the bottom tray, I'm going to take my little crate stack books and I'm going to put that in the middle just to start off with. And then I'm going to take another Ray Dunn mug and I love these because if you can tell the outside is red where it says USA and the inside is blue so I thought that was totally cool. Then I took one of my little wood risers uh, and put it in the back and then I put my Ray Dunn topper on top of that just to give it a little bit more height so I can display this little glitter July 4th sign right in the back. After that, I'm going to take my stack of blocks and I'm going to put that on the side. Now, it really bugged me that both of those, the mug and that stack of blocks said USA. So I took the USA mug out and I'm going to replace it with the one that says Brave. Yes, little details like that really bug me. <laughs> and now I am taking that original mug off the top and I'm putting the USA one up there. And that is because... If you notice, <laughs> the one I just took off and the brave one was red inside and it bugged me that there were two red mugs. Next, I stuck some tissue in that Brave mug, and that helped me elevate my two DIY rolling pins that I stuck in the mug. After that, I grabbed this little milk jug that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I took off the ribbons that I had from my bead decor, and I tied on some 4th of July ribbon to the handle and this is why I say to always have ribbons handy because you never know when you can throw in those little touches so I just tied a simple bow to the handle and then I'm going to stick it right behind the Ray Dunn mug or right behind the post and I did stuff some tissue in there too because now I'm going to take some florals and go ahead and make a little floral arrangement using some picks from the Dollar Tree. As you watch me arrange this, and FYI, I'm not very good at floral arrangements, but I just thought I would take a moment and welcome you to my channel. If you are new here, I want to thank you so much for joining me today or choosing to watch my video. I really hope that you love what you see. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I am working my way through all of the wonderful comments that everyone has been leaving me. I was on vacation last week, so I kind of got behind, but I do read each and every one of them as they come in it just might be that I can't respond to it right then and there but I promise you I will respond and I do read every one of them thank you so much for your support with your help I passed 6,000 subscribers this weekend and I could not be more excited and it is all because of you so thank you so much Then to add one last final touch to the bottom, I took this pack of candles from the Dollar Tree and I put the blue candle right on top of my stack of books. Next, I grabbed these utensils and I added them to my USA mug right on top and I do end up stuffing it with some tissue. That way it helps hold the utensils up because they were kind of falling everywhere and that really seemed to help. Then I realized I really didn't like that I had two things sticking out of the side on one side if that made sense like the rolling pins at the bottom were sticking out and those utensils so I just switched the gnome and the mug and I switched them to the opposite side that way it all was even out and it looked more appeasing to the eye after staring at it, I realized that that watering jug, or that, I'm sorry, that milk jug really needed something. So I took an, a piece of ribbon and I just simply tied it around the top and that really added a great touch of blue. 
after I added that little pop of color, that completed this tear tray. I absolutely love how it came out. It is so colorful and patriotic, so it really made my eyes happy. But you tell me, what do you think? tray done it's now time to put my curate my most prized possession <laughs> onto the coffee bar and of course I gotta wipe it down first I am not kidding when I say this is my most prized possession. <laughs> I wake up every morning and I beeline it right to the coffee machine and everyone knows not to talk to me until my cup is empty. <laughs> now, I'm just kidding. I am a mom. That doesn't actually work. But it, my mom actually did deep clean this for me last week, but I just thought I'd wipe it off. It does get dusty. And then all I'm going to do to this is add my America the Beautiful mug to that and that completes the Keurig. Okay, so now that I added my Keurig onto my coffee bar, it's time to add my second tier tray. This tier tray actually came from Target and it was only $5 and I absolutely love it. It goes with everything. It's so lightweight so it's easy to carry around, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to decorate this with some goodies as well. So I am placing this tear tray on the opposite side of the coffee bar. And the first thing I'm going to add is another Ray Dunn Land of the Free mug right on the right hand side. And then this cute little mason jar. Oh, you can see that I switched the Land of the Free over. Sorry, I must have cut that out. But I'm going to add this little mason jar sign to the opposite side. Then I'm going to add a riser to the bottom and put my cute little camper on top. Next, I'm going to take these two little candy jars and, of course, I have to fill them with something. So I found this America Mix Skittles at the store and then I'm going to fill the other one with my absolute favorite peanut M&Ms. Now, not all of the peanut M&Ms fit in this jar, so I just took the rest with me to my room. <laughs> Then I took my little firework display, and at first I was trying to fit it on the bottom, but then I quickly realized that, that was not going to work, so it caused me to have to move everything around. So I went ahead and just started moving stuff where I thought that it would fit or look a little better. I'm not going to explain all of this. You're going to see the final look at the end, but this is just kind of the process I go through. And like I said, those little details really do bug me if there's two colors by each other or, you know, I, I am a little anal when it comes to stuff like that and I do pay attention to stuff like that so here I am just trying to figure everything out and I am getting closer I can tell <laughs> I'm getting closer to my final look but sometimes it just takes just staring at it so I thought maybe that it needed some height in the back especially to cover that plug so I took this glass star dish and I put that in the back and I really thought that that completed it but then I started looking at it more and just kind of thought it needed something. Okay, so now we have finished this tear tray. However, I kind of feel like this little glass star gets lost. So I think I have an idea on how to make it really pop. Then also, it really, really bugs me that this cord is right here. So we're also going to make a DIY to hide that too. So let's head up to the craft room. All right, we're in the craft room and now it's time for our first little DIY. So I took this glass dish and you guys, this is so easy. 
All I did was trace it on some red paper. I cut it out and then I Mod Podged it to the bottom of the glass dish. And that was it. I did add some ribbon to the front and that completed that. It was so easy to do. It took me minutes to finish and it really did add a great detail to the bottom of that tiered tray. And it really made the glass dish pop and it was a great little background to the camper that I ended up putting in front of it. That just shows you that you can take something and you can totally make it your own or change the aesthetic of it by just adding some scrapbook paper or some ribbon or some paint. I mean, you can really take anything and change up the look and make it your own and to help fit your decor. So after I was done Mod Podging that piece of paper to the underneath part of the dish, I did go ahead and like I said, I hot glued some ribbon to the perimeter of my star. So how I did this was I started at the bottom and then I, when I got to like the little points or the, the corners, I flipped it over each other. So you can see here, I'm going to add glue and then I'm going to flip it over. So that way it made kind of a little detail, but also I kind of had to do it like that so I can form the star. So I just did this all the way around my star and that was it. It was that easy. This is your friendly reminder that if you're loving what you see today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it help my channel to grow, but it also tells YouTube that you love my stuff and want to see more. And more of my content will show up on your homepage. So don't forget to hit that like button. All right, well, after that star was done, I went ahead and I stuck it behind my camper, which I thought framed it out perfectly, and that completed this tiered tray. So, what do you think? Now it's time to make something to hide that cord. So I grabbed one of these leftover cutting boards and I'm not gonna lie, I grabbed a lot of them in the spring when I saw them because I absolutely loved them. But I started off by taking out all of these little metal tacks, but I did keep them near because I will be using them again. Then I sanded down the rough edges to make it a nice smooth surface and then I gave the inside square two coats of Waverly chalk paint in white. Once my paint was dry, I took my Mod Podge and I made sure to give that inside square a really nice, thick, even coat. I'm going to be putting fabric on this, so you're going to want to put a thick coat. Then I took this awesome scarf that I got from the Dollar Tree and I absolutely loved it because I loved all of the colors and I just thought it was really rustic looking and really fun. And then I spread that over that square and I made sure to smooth it out and make sure that all the corners and the edges were adhered down. Once they were, I took my scissors and I kind of gave a rough cut around the square. After that, I went a little closer to the square and it was impossible for me to get a nice clean cut. So I kind of just loved the fact that it was a little rugged or a little frayed because it just added to that rustic look and y'all know I love that rustic look. I did go in with some detail scissors that I bought from Dollar Tree and that really seemed to help get it closer to that square edge and that's the look that I settled for and I actually really loved it. Then I put a layer of Mod Podge right on top of the scarf so that way it would harden up and become one with the square. <laughs>
after that, you know me, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and a makeup sponge, and I'm just going around the outside of my cutting board, and then I'm also going to go in the fabric as well. I really love the rustic look, so I thought that distressing it would add right to it. Then I took those tacks that I originally took off of the sign, and by using my wire cutters, I'm actually cutting off the tack part, the pointy parts of all of the tacks. And then I'm going to simply hot glue one to each corner. Then to help those blend in with the rustic look, I took that Waverly Antique Wax and I just dabbed some of that on each one of my tacks. At the top, I did feel that it needed a bow, so I took a, well, first I took this burlap that I thought I was going to use, but I didn't end up using it, and then I took this red, white, and blue ribbon from Hobby Lobby, and I cut off a really long piece and just simply tied it like a shoelace bow, and then I actually found a burlap bow that I pulled off of another DIY, and I just ended up hot gluing that down right underneath the handle and then glued down the red, white, and blue ribbon on top of that. Now I thought about adding something to the middle of that square, but honestly this is going to be used as a layering piece, so something is going to be put in front of it anyways, and I think that scarf added enough detail and color, so I thought that that was perfect as it is. So after I got my bows all glued down, I just took a piece of nautical rope and I actually unwound it so I took one of the strands off of it and then I just tied it through the hole up top to create a fake hanger although this is not going to be hanging this is going to be sitting up but I just thought that it would add to the look of a cutting board and I really loved how this came out. So after my hanger was all tied on, it was now time to add that behind my tiered tray to hide that cord. So that's exactly what I did. So I went ahead and I put it behind the tiered tray and it is kind of sitting on the tiered tray a little bit, but that's okay because my whole goal was to hide that plug. And I added this really cute America Ray Dunn piece right in front of it to hide the rest of the cord. What do you think? So now that we got that side all done, I felt like this tier tray over here, the first one we did, it's a little bare right here. But I think I know exactly what to do to help solve that issue. Let's go back up to the craft room. All right, so first I am starting off with this wooden star that I got in the crafter's square section. And I'm going to give it a really good coat of Waverly chalk paint in white. Once that was dry, I actually used this fabric adhesive that I got from the Dollar Tree and I spread it all over the star just like I did with the Mod Podge in the cutting board project. And then I took that same scarf that I used in the cutting board project and I laid it over my star. Again, I wanted to make sure that all of the sides and edges were completely covered and I pulled it really tight so that way there weren't any wrinkles. Now, it was impossible for me to not have any wrinkles, but I did my best to really smooth it out. After it was dry, I just took my scissors and I cut around my star as close to the edge as possible. Thank you. 
The reason why I decided to go with a scarf for these two projects is because I just thought it would be fun to mix up the texture a little bit. I could have used scrapbook paper or I could have used paint, but I really thought that it would add some dimension and some fun detail to my coffee bar. So after I gave it that rough cut, I just smoothed it out to make sure that it was all adhered down. Then again, I took those small little detail scissors that I got from the Dollar Tree and cut as close to the star as possible. Now, just like the cutting board project, if there were some frayed edges or it wasn't cut very even, I was okay with that because again, it adds to that rustic look. After I had it cut down the best I could, I went ahead and put a nice good layer of Mod Podge right on top. So my idea what for this was to make this into a little tray. So what I did was I found these little cups and you can see they're two for 99 cents and they're just at a little grocery store near my house or you can use a candlestick or another cup. And I was showing you that I also picked up a cute little American flag plate too that you could also use. And all I did was add some popsicle sticks or some craft sticks, whatever we're calling them these days, <laughs> to the top to give it more of a flat surface for me to glue down my star. Then I just simply used some hot glue and it glued that star right on top. And now I have a really cute little stand. That way it's going to add some height to that one part of my coffee bar. To finish this off, I'm going to take some of this burlap and red ribbon that I got from Michael's on sale after Christmas and I just wrapped that around the bottom. And I thought this was so cool. I really loved this. Okay, now it's time to add this to that side of the coffee bar, and now we're going to style it. So I put that right next to my tiered tray, and then I took this cute little red truck bucket that I also found at the Dollar Tree, and these fun 4th of July straws, and I simply just put the straws inside the bucket. Next, I took this little American flag that I painted. I put that kind of off to the side of the bucket, and then I added one of these little white candles that I got in that three pack. Now, this is where I started kind of changing things around. So I took my Ray Dunn mug, and I put that next to the bucket. I moved around the flag, and honestly, I'm gonna start moving around a bunch of stuff. But one thing I did do was add this really cute little red truck to the front of my tier tray and the stand. That I kept there. <laughs> Then to fill any empty holes that I had or empty spaces, I took this filler, I guess you would call it the decorative star filler, and I just kind of put them in places that I felt could use it. And I added those stars to the other side as well. So I thought I was done and then as I was looking at it, I decided to move some things around of course. So I took that Land of the Free mug from my little stand that I made and I moved that over to the other tiered tray. And then I took that jar sign and I put that on the tray that I made. And I thought that that really completed the look for some reason. That little switch just made it more appeasing and appealing to the eye. Then I added some of these flowers and we're just going to zip right through that because like I said, I am not a good floral arrangement maker. <laughs> so I just added these flowers and after that, that truly completed my coffee bar and I absolutely love how it came out. It is so patriotic and it screams 4th of July. What do you think?
4th of July, and I absolutely love how it came out. I really love all the pops of color, of course, the red, white, and blue, and I think this coffee bar screams patriotic vibes. Well, I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you got a lot of great ideas and were inspired to come up with ways to decorate your coffee bar or certain parts of your home. And also, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Then hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, don't forget to hit that drop down menu and hit all so you can get notified about all of my videos. All right, well, until we craft or decorate again, I'll see you soon. Bye!